All right, so for this training session, we're gonna focus on the W of arc flaws, which is going to be your wind. Wind is a critical component to archery always. And what you'll find, especially when you're shooting in these big canyons, is the wind can vary, the wind can be tricky, and there's a couple things that you can do to combat that. One is you can just pay attention to what you're feeling, right? So right now we've got a slope that's, that's this wind is sloping across here right to me. So I've actually got some right to left wind coming through here. Now sometimes we've been on the range first thing in the morning and you got just some thermals just pushing down heavy. Sometimes it's whipping over the top and pushing down and if you're shooting across, obviously you've got this right to left. And sometimes if you're tucked in a little pocket like this, you might not realize what's going on out there. So a couple tips that you can do is one, pay attention to if there's any type of pollen blowing in the air. You know, a lot of times I'll come and during my assessment of the target, I'm looking for those different things. So I'll look for any type of pollen that's blowing through and seeing what those currents are doing. The other thing is when you go to a target and there's other groups waiting to shoot, don't just take a break and talk to your buddies and not pay attention to what else is going on if you're really wanting to take these types of shots super serious. The better thing to do would be to get behind those archers, get your binoculars up, and pay attention to what those arrows are doing as they're going to the targets. Because if you can feel that right to left wind, you can also take note if everyone in that group just shot at that target and they're all hitting back in the flank, then you know there's gonna be quite a bit of drift on those targets and you can make your adjustments. So two ways to focus on compensating for the wind that I normally do are one, going to be to aim off based off what I've seen or what I'm reading from other people shooting that target or any type of current that I see coming down or using my level as a way to cant into the wind. So what you need to think about, just like when we talk about shooting on a side hill or a slope, whatever our top limb or top cam is doing, that arrow will follow. So if our top cam is leaning to the right, our arrow is going to go to the right as well. If it's leaning left, it's going to go left. So you can actually learn how to bubble into the wind and learn on your practice range, how much do I need to tilt my bow just a little bit and actually move that bubble in the opposite direction so that I can make that shot on the target. Right here, I would say I've probably got a seven, eight mile an hour wind. So I'm not gonna have a tremendous amount of drift but if this was gazing through and blowing hard, being paying attention and being aware of what that group in front of you and watching those arrows can give you a huge assessment on what's going on. Obviously, if you're shooting and you see that person's arrow laying off to the side like this as it's going to the target, you know that you have quite a bit of wind to deal with. And instead of just using your bubble for a few inches here or there, you may be better off just aiming slightly off that target to compensate for the wind. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this shot, go through all my processes. Uh, I put an arrow down there. It's actually on the three o'clock on the 12 right now. So I'm gonna see if I can back that up, put another one in there. Perfect shot right in there. We got two in the 12 er A little bit of drift, but again, paying attention to what those other groups are doing are gonna help you so much in knowing what your arrow is gonna do, especially on the longer targets. And if you really wanna learn your bow and what it does in the wind, on a course like this isn't the place to do it. Go out, check your Weather Channel app, See what your wind's doing. If you've got a 10 mile an hour crosswind on your flat home archery range, aim center dot at 50 yards and see what type of drift your arrow and your ballistics are giving you with that type of formula. 
And again, just learning to plot from trial and error of what your arrow does by aiming dead center on a flat range and seeing what kind of drift you have. You can start out on a brand new piece of paper or a brand new target, brand new paper plate, aim center, see what your mile an hour is on your wind, make a bunch of shots at 50 yards with that wind, take a picture and you can keep it on your phone, have it as reference, 50 mile an hour wind or 50 yard shot with a 10 mile an hour wind, we've got seven inches average of drift. So you can factor that in when you come out here to the course. All right, let's put one more in there. And for all of you at home, I think you've got plenty of things to work on when it comes to factoring in your wind for the tack ranges. Love it. <laughs> Slapping shafts.